Buongiorno, eh, mi chiamo Elisabetta Noli, sono qui rappresentanza del Global Campus of Human Rights per questa conferenza stampa dedicata alla Venice School for Human Rights Defenders. Eh, una prima nota tecnica, eh, volevo verificare che eh, tutti i partecipanti siano edotti in inglese in modo da poter condurre la, la conferenza stampa in inglese altrimenti fornirò eh, traduzione qualora sia necessario. Grazie. So, thank you all for uh, being here and online. My name is Elisabetta Noli um, and I here represent the Global Campus of Human Rights in uh, this important uh, moment. Uh, we are here to uh, provide uh, information about the Venice School for Human Rights Defenders which is uh, starting uh, as of uh, uh, tomorrow um, at uh, the Global Campus uh, and uh, to host uh, our uh, human rights defenders and human rights champions, uh, uh, Mansour Eshoyahi and Patrick Zaki. Uh, first, uh, some uh, thank you notes uh, to the European Cultural Center for to start that hosts uh, here the Global Campus today at uh, Palazzo Michele. We are very thankful for their support. We would like also to thank uh, authorities, uh, and in particular the city of Venice, uh, through the presidency of uh, the Municipality um, Council. Uh, this, uh, the organization of this event, together with other events of the Global Campus, is included in the general uh, program called the Marzo Donna, so dedicated to women's uh, rights uh, that runs uh, throughout uh, the month of March. And uh, today being uh, Human Rights Day, our thoughts go to all uh, women, uh, and in particular women rights defenders uh, in the world. We also would like to thank the region of Veneto, and of course uh, our uh, e European Union uh, uh, supporters, uh, the European Commission, who is the main uh, uh, supporter and partner of the Global Campus of Human Rights, and mostly in this case uh, the European Parliament, for the partnership that we have in relation to the Venice School, as the Venice School is a part, is integrated in the Sakharov Fellowship Program. So, um, as you know, the uh, prize, uh, the Sakharov Prize is dedicated to champions uh, um, that uh, work on freedom of expression and human rights defenders and our also um, um, hosts uh, here are uh, uh, in particular uh, working on freedom of expression and are the voices uh, of uh, many other human rights defenders around the world. I have uh, a message also that I would like to uh, read to you. I will do it in Italian from um, uh, the vice president of the, um, uh, the president of the Legislative Assembly of the uh, region uh, Emilia Romagna. So I will uh, briefly read her message to us today. Um, so buongiorno a tutte e a tutti. Mi dispiace di non poter essere presente oggi insieme a voi, ma altri impegni me lo hanno impedito e ringrazio molto il Global Campus e tutti gli organizzatori per il loro invito. Ci tenevo comunque a farvi avere un saluto a nome mio dell'Assemblea Legislativa della Regione Emilia-Romagna che ho l'onore di presiedere. Occasioni come queste ci permettono di sottolineare ancora una volta ogni giorno quanto sia importante mantenere alta e costante l'attenzione sui diritti umani. Una vicenda che negli ultimi anni ho seguito da vicino a livello personale e come Presidente dell'Assemblea Legislativa dell'Emilia Romagna è quella di Patrick Zacchi, una battaglia che abbiamo vinto grazie a un impegno civile, istituzionale e collettivo. Da questa vittoria della democrazia abbiamo imparato quanto sia importante fare rete e continuare a lottare insieme per i diritti umani, le libertà e le verità che ancora tendono di essere riconosciute. Mi fa inoltre piacere parlare di diritti proprio oggi che ricorre a giornata internazionale dei diritti della donna, una ricorrenza che ci impone ogni anno un prezioso momento di riflessione. A partire dai diritti e dall'articolo 3 della nostra amata Costituzione, 
Tutti i cittadini hanno pari dignità sociale, sono uguali davanti alla legge, senza distinzione di sesso, di razza, di lingua, di religione, di opinioni politiche, di condizioni personali e sociali. Un'attenzione voluta e sostenuta anche dalle 21 donne costituenti, tra cui mi piace ricordare Neil De Iotti, a cui dobbiamo tanto. Anche oggi dobbiamo quindi soffermarci e chiederci se nel nostro quotidiano, nel lavoro, in famiglia, questi diritti alle donne vengono sempre riconosciuti e attuati. Ogni 8 marzo la riflessione si fa più complessa, ma il nostro impegno non deve mai venir meno e vogliamo dimostrarlo nei piccoli e grandi gesti di ogni giorno, anche attraverso momenti di incontro come quello di oggi. Grazie ancora per l'impegno e la cura che mettete nella tutela dei diritti umani. So Emma Petitti is uh, the president of the Legislative Assembly of the region of uh, Emilia Romagna. She sends a message uh, to greet you and uh, to reflect on the importance of remembering all the struggles that uh, women uh, are conducting uh, both at the international level and also in their uh, domestic and everyday lives. Um, I would... Uh, I would uh, continue by giving you just a brief introduction of uh, the, um, the Global Campus and the Venice School for Human Rights Defenders. The Global Campus is in, uh, an international network of uh, universities that uh, since uh, more than 20 years organizes uh, uh, educational courses and in particular postgraduate courses around the world on the theme of uh, human rights and democracy. Um, as a global campus, we are present in uh, eight regions of the world, so not only in Europe, but in uh, Southeast Europe, the Balkans, uh, in Central Asia and the Caucasus, in North Africa, in uh, um, uh, the rest of Africa, in uh, Latin America, and also in Asia and the Pacific. And in each of these regions, uh, we have a network of uh, universities that uh, cooperate together and uh, involve uh, students uh, from all over the world and in particular from the regions in uh, human rights uh, studies. What we uh, also do in addition so, to master's programs uh, is uh, many other activities that always relate to human rights and democracy and in particular advocacy also for uh, human rights and for human rights defenders. And uh, that is why also the Venice School for Human Rights Defenders is centered on uh, supporting uh, human rights uh, defenders uh, um, all over the world, together with the European Parliament, as we mentioned uh, before. Uh, the Venice School uh, will uh, involve, uh, for this edition, uh, for t uh, 24 uh, participants from all over the world, out of which 14 are Sakharov Fellows that are recipient of a fellowship given by the European Parliament. Uh, they have already started their uh, activities in Brussels at the European Parliament and uh, they reach us uh, as of tomorrow for uh, continuing uh, their activities in, uh, in Venice. And uh, uh, Patrick will uh, meet them, uh, of course, uh, um, tomorrow, starting with uh, uh, introducing uh, his work, his experience, uh, while uh, Mansoure, uh, in the course of uh, a, a roundtable that will take place on Sunday, and together with other Iranian, uh, Iranian woman, women from uh, um, the uh, uh, movement uh, Women, Life uh, and Freedom will uh, address also the students uh, and uh, respond to their many questions about your work and uh, your activities. Um, briefly introducing uh, Patrick Zaki and Mansure Shoyahi. Um, Mansure is uh, a writer and uh, uh, human rights uh, expert and defenders that has dedicated uh, her life uh, to the cause of uh, Iranian uh, women and in general to the women's movement. It's uh, not an, uh, a start that uh, was made uh, just recently, but it's uh, more than 30 years of uh, activism uh, in, uh, in uh, this sense. And many are the projects, and uh, she will also refer to her in, uh, in her uh, brief statements. 
Whereas uh, Patrick uh, Zaki is uh, very well known uh, to all of us and is a point of reference and inspiration to many human rights students and uh, activists uh, because of his uh, recent uh, um, activities as researcher in, in Italy at the University of Bologna. Is, uh, is integrated in, uh, in our academic uh, environment and community. And he, he endured uh, um, um, a lot of uh, persecution and uh, arbit arbitrary detention uh, in his country uh, that uh, was uh, that covered by media and that uh, <clears throat> we were all uh, uh, provided uh, information upon. But what we are trying here to, to do is also to get more insights from uh, their own uh, um, experience. Um, I would like to um, briefly say how their, their testimony and resilience is really, as I said, uh, an inspiration for all human rights defenders. And uh, this will be particularly important so for the participants uh, in uh, the Venice School for Human Rights uh, Defenders because they really are keen uh, to learn from you what are the uh, human qualities beyond uh, uh, your courage uh, that uh, will inspire them to continue in their uh, activism and, uh, and activities. Um, in order to start our uh, conference and conversation more on uh, the substance and giving you the floor, I've already spoken <laughs> too much, I would like to tackle maybe a, a first uh, topic that is the, the one of freedom of expression, arbitrary detention, and, uh, and rights of uh, prisoners and prison conditions. Uh, we know from uh, both your experiences, uh, you've endured the uh, prison and the detention. Uh, we know from recent cases, like the cases of uh, Mrs. Salis, that uh, this is uh, unfortunately a, a way uh, through which uh, um, governments and power try to control a dissent in many, in many countries. And uh, so I would uh, first ask uh, Mansoure and, uh, and then Patrick, uh, how, what is the message that you feel more responsible to spread uh, after your experience as prisoners of conscience? Please, uh, Mansoure. Uh, first of all, I would like to say everybody happy Women's Day, however, women are not happy around the world, particularly in Middle East and my country, Iran, and also Afghanistan. Um, actually, my experience as a, a prisoner, uh, maybe it's different with the new generation of prisoners in Iran. I would like focus on uh, women prisoner in Iran now for Women, life, freedom, movement. I want to say that uh, prison is a new geography for uh, fighting, for continuing their fight. Every day they wrote a petition. Every day they uh, take hunger strike against, for example, something like uh, the 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 leave, the legal leave, the, the permission of uh, calling their family. I want to say that now we have a new geography and new union of women to add women life freedom for fighting. And it is the same. When I was in prison, I did. But I prefer to talk about this young generation. However, they work a lot between in prison, even against the forced hijab. Can you imagine? They call, for example, the authority of prison call them for interrogated or interrogation or for visiting day, but they they fight and they avoid to have forced her job. It means that the line of a struggle is continuing 
still in prison, but there are a lot of tribal evidence too. For example, a lot of torture, a lot of rape, a lot of execution, and it, is, it happens inside of prison, but after one week or two weeks being released of the prison, a lot of young women and men get suicide. Why? What happened in the prison? They can't say, they can't share their secret with the other, even when they are released. I was released from prison when every day, every day, a car stood in front of my house because they wanted to listen by, on that time, the last time I was in prison, it was 2010, and they want to listen every, every normal dialogue between, between my family. And that's why I left my home, because I didn't want to bother my family member, my husband, my son. And <laughs> I drive city by city for about six months, uh, because I was forbidden to travel to abroad. And finally, my brave lawyer, Nasrin Sotude, and I am really surprised to see her portray her. Uh, uh, her face here next to me because she's always next to me. She helped me to give me back my passport and I was able to left country. But I want to say that please look at the prison in Iran, not only Evin prison, because my evidence is in Evin. And nowadays, 65 women activists in, uh, are in Evin prison, but the other prison around Iran, there are several prisons, particularly in the uh, far city like Shiraz, Gilan, a lot. Only, only women prisoners are 265, and it's not a number. It's the beautiful soul who wants to fight for better life, for normal life, for against the discriminated, this discrimination law. And our movement, particularly women life freedom, are a non-violence, is a non-violence, is a performative and beautiful uh, movement. Please ask your people, your civil society, your human rights defender, go to Iran and open the door of Evin. You are a European. You should remind the Bastille prison and the day French people open the door of Bastille prison. Please do this to help Iranian activists to open the door of this tribal really tribal prison. We are, we are fighting together. It's a sisterhood. It's a global sisterhood. Women Life Freedom is an abstract of the every demand and desire of women, not only in Iran, not only in Middle East, but also from our world. And prisoners continue their life still by fighting and also by creating a lot of handmade. I want, can I show the, the have I time still? Yes, please. Yeah. I would uh, That's like actually, to Patrick. Yeah, one of the, one of the work uh, we are doing together with Iranian women prison in Iran, only Evin, because Evin was my case study because I was there two times and one times in other prison in Khuramabad, Lorestan. Now I ask them, all of them, to make handmade and they send me a lot of handmade from Nasr.
Nasri and Nargis and a lot of people, you can have the catalog. However, we have also the website. And they are creating a lot of art, a lot of narration. And Veach of Handmade has a narration behind. And most of them are dolls because they are mothers. And they, they want to make something for their children. And one day, Nasrin told me, because Nasrin made three beautiful dolls for our exhibition. And we are traveling around the world, around the Europe. And I asked her, Nasrin, please send a message for Norwegian exhibition. We were in Norway. And she said, however, we are forbidden to travel. However, we are in prison, but our dolls traveling around the world and narrate our stories. Thank, Thank you, Nasreen. Thank you, you. <laughs> Mansoureh. Of course, you mentioned Nasreen, and her name uh, comes to mind all the time. Uh, and. Um, Thank you for your testimony. Also, what are the activities that are occur happening inside the prisons uh, for uh, continuing activism? Patrick, the, can you also refer to your uh, experience in, um, in jail as to, to your arbitrary detention and how this has become also your uh, main uh, um, activist uh, point of reference and also of your studies, you were telling me before we started that is, uh, your PhD will be dedicated also to the theme of uh, prison condition, please. Yeah, uh, for, for sure. Uh, first of all, I'm really pleased to be here and uh, great honor to be part of the initiative and of the program. Uh, for me, I was in the prison because of an article uh, about the Christian minorities in Egypt. Uh, I wrote this article in 2019. I was imprisoned uh, after only one, one, one semester in the University of Bologna. Uh, I was in one of the worst prisons in, in, in Egypt and in the world. Uh, the situation was really hard inside the prison. We are talking about uh, cells like they are 2.5 uh, meters, diameter 2.5 meter high. Uh, without bathroom, and uh, uh, it was a really hard situation inside the Egyptian prison. Uh, always I'm saying that I'm one of the most privileged prisoners. I'm here today uh, in, in Italy. Uh, a lot of colleagues are still there in the prisons of Egypt because of their opinions. We have uh, thousands of prisoners of consciousness who are still there thinking about them. I will mention the name of Ali Abd Fattah, one of the most pioneer human rights defender and activists who are still there in, in the jail in Egypt. Uh, uh, we still need to work more and more for those who are still in the prison. Uh, in, my ca in, in the case of Egypt, we have uh, a lot of also women who are still there in the prison. We should work for them. Uh, they are not lucky to have like this huge campaigns, this well known names, but we know about them and we keep them in our hearts, thinking about them and thinking about their freedom. Um, today is the International Women Day, so I'm always thinking about them, about uh, the Egyptian uh, political prisoners who are still there in the prison. I'm thinking about uh, the case of uh, Ilaria Salis. Uh, uh, it's a very important case for us. Uh, what we saw from uh, images uh, of her trial is very, very alarming for me uh, because I was in her place uh, seeing her like um, hanged hands and, uh, and foots. That's something inhuman and give us an uh, uh, like a sign, like a signing, like alarming, uh, alerting thing that we should work more for Ilaria, for her case, uh, for having her right of a fair trial. We will not uh, uh, interfere with the judiciary system in any place all over the world, but we are asking that we want Ilaria to have a fair trial and the Italian uh, government to interfere in this, to provide her with her minimal rights. Um, I think like we will talk more uh, after that about the experience, but that the message uh, that I want everyone all over the world uh, to have his right to express himself, express his opinion uh, in a safe way and not to be in prison as what happened with me and with uh, a lot of people all over the world uh, because of their opinions. 
Thank you, Patrick, uh, for uh, these important words. You, you both mentioned uh, International Women's Day uh, today, and uh, of course, uh, this is a part of integral part, as we said, for Mansure of your uh, life of activism, uh, and uh, and also Patrick' research was. Uh, also linked uh, in Bologna to uh, gender studies yeah, yeah, yeah. and, um, and yeah. women. So um, we talk often about uh, human rights defenders as uh, agents for change. How do you think uh, the, the struggles of the women's movement are a, a vehicle for this change? Please, uh, Patrick, if you want to start. Yeah, sure. Uh, look, to be honest, uh, I'm, I'm not in a place to talk about uh, like uh, women movement and their like their pulses because at the end of the day I'm uh, I'm a man so uh, I'm always saying that I'm pro feminist I'm not a feminist because there is no man can be a feminist I'm pro feminist uh, so for me uh, yeah that's my proficiency I did my master's degree in gender studies uh, for sure I'm really interested in uh, in such topic and in the feminist movements uh, I see that um, in Italy right now we have a very very good uh, wave of feminist movement uh, as we know that uh, one of the most interesting slogans that I'm always thinking about is uh, uh, make noise let's make noise uh, the the slogan that have been raised by the like the Italian uh, feminist movement, um, and I think in this day I'm thinking about uh, the women's of the women of Sudan uh, because they are subjected to rape on daily basis in the last three months. I'm thinking about the women of Congo for what they are passing by. I'm thinking about the women of Iran uh, for their work and their struggle uh, for revolting against uh, the regime there. I'm thinking about the women of Palestine who are dying because they are trying to save their kids. Uh, I'm thinking about the women of Egypt uh, who can't express themselves in a in the proper way because of the censorship there. I'm thinking about every woman all over the world. Uh, so uh, that's uh, how I think about it. And uh, I wish like uh, we can, like next year, have a much brighter future for the feminist movement all over the world. Thank you, Patrick. Mansoura. I would like to start my uh, uh, talk with a very famous uh, phrase, maybe you know this, human rights is a women's rights. It means it's not possible to talk about human rights without focusing on women's rights. So today is the International Women's Day. And today is 100 and year after the first international women's rights celebration in my country. Can you imagine 100 years ago in my country, Iran, it was a, uh, there is a celebration in a city in the north of Iran, Rasht. And it was an association, the name was Saadat Neswan. It means happiness for women. It was after constitutional time. And on that time, after the constitutional time, uh, demand of women was on the um, three basic demands. The right of vote, the right of uh, uh, establishing association, women association, and the right of education. So for these three rights, it was the first celebration in Iran. But I want to say that the second one, the second uh, uh, um, uh, point, oh, the, the second important event, celebration, Women's International Women's Day, was in 1979. It was only one week after revolution, after Islamic revolution, that Ms. Mr. Khomeini, uh, the leader, the leader of uh, revolution, sent a verdict that the woman for, should be covered by veil to go to the public uh, uh, area, public, for example, administrative, everything, everything. 
And then it was International Women's Day, next to International Women's Day. In 1979, more than 5,100 5, women took the street. And I was there. It, it is one of my proud, I am honored, honored that I, I was a participant of that. I was a, a young student on that moment. And we a slogan, we chant that, uh, let me say in Farsi, ما انقلاب نکردیم تا به عقب برگردیم. It means we didn't do revolution for going back. We want to going forward. And it was the, a slogan of that day. And it was the, you know, it was the, base of our liberation, women liberation movement. If I want to divide liberation movement and rights movement, the women's rights movement started from constitutional time. In the beginning of uh, uh, the 20th century, as I said, the first uh, International Women's Day was 1922. Yeah, 23. Yeah, and the second one, as a milestone, I can say it was 1979. And the third one, it is woman life freedom. When the revolutionary girls, maybe you know about it, the girls who uh, went to the, before, before the movement, uh, one year before the movement, the girls, uh, uh, took the street and jump, from, uh, jump uh, on the platform, electricity platform, and take their uh, scarf like a flag and stood for freedom, liberation. And it was the, the start figure, the start figurative uh, movement to make women life freedom. And nowadays, we are honored that uh, International Women's Day, however, we are not allowed in our country to make it publicly, particularly this year, but from this morning up to now, I receive a lot of message. Everybody, every activist, either inside of prison or outside, among the very private circle celebrated and the men join us and this is the revolution in our country when the men is accompanied the women before that it was not but women life freedom particularly international women's day make this possibility for iranian civil society to join men and women However, we were 44 years under an ideologic government, ideologic religion government. It's more than two times, mil times worse than only ideologic. Being ideologic is bad, it's not good. Having a state, ideologic state, is not good. We have a lot of experience from the Soviet Union, from the, uh, but you know, ideology with religion, it's much more uh, uh, difficult because they came to your private life. They, they, they control your body. This International Women's Day in Iran, it's for bodily liberation bodily freedom for women. We are for freedom, justice, and also against the corruption of government who make people poor and make government rich. Sanction is bad for people, but a state has quite enough source to stay rich and to do to follow their militarism maps and also their uh, plans against the women. 
International Women's Day for us, it's a new start, and we are still hopeful. Thank you very much uh, for these uh, important insights and also for framing your uh, intervention in the bigger and uh, wider context of uh, uh, social justice, uh, dignity, and human rights respect. Uh, my third and uh, last uh, question or uh, point of uh, reflection for you uh, is uh, referring to the, the role of education, human rights education. So you will uh, meet uh, the uh, participants in the Venice School uh, for Human Rights Defenders in the coming days. Uh, they look in you uh, and so in search of uh, inspiration. Uh, what do you think uh, is the most important quality of a human rights defender? And what are the uh, what are is are is, are going to be your advice to them in terms of uh, how to keep uh, networking together and support each other in uh, your campaign? Please, Mansoura. Uh, thank you. Actually, for each and every activist and human rights defender, a milieu like this. You know, I, I feel I am at home, honestly, because I think, okay, they are human rights defenders, they are uh, gender studies student, feminist studies student, and I feel I am at home. And this home make me a platform, a sincere platform to talk about women. This is indeed for every woman to have a platform. However, we don't have. The state has, for example, the, uh, a lot of uh, United Nations community have a lot of uh, uh, platforms, but such a sincere and educational platform permit us to talk more about the women around the world. It's a transnational milieu. And I think transnational is totally different with international. In the international world, particularly from United Nations, sorry, we are feeling a little bit of hegemony, of hierarchy. And, uh, but for transnational era like this, from Egypt, from Iran, from Italy, we are together to talk about our uh, uh, problematic uh, 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 situation, not only for women, but also for men. We are really suffering from the uh, uh, lack of the freedom, lack of the uh, uh, freedom of expression, lack of the justice, and the, the, you know, the big, big discrimination between class. However, we are not a capitalist, for example, uh, uh, country, but you can easily see around the Iran a lot of rich people. You have never imagined that how can they are rich because they are near the, around the government and the state, but there are a lot of poor people and the middle class who is disappearing year by year. And it's, it's, it's a very bad. We have to look at the, of this. Dignity is a main of the uh, human rights uh, principle. But now, middle class in Iran is losing their dignity. And can you imagine a middle class culture, a middle class lifestyle needs some more money than, for example, the labor class or, you know, I'm talking about, about lifestyle. Lifestyle. I don't talk about the which one is privileged or which one not. I'm talking about the culture behind of the class. And now, middle class in Iran keep their lifestyle, 
keep their taste for going to, for example, theater, concert, uh, shop, having a lot of books, uh, being membership of a lot of museum, but the salary of middle class is less than a salary of uh, labor class. Because labor class, for example, can do some work, however it's not enough, quiet enough, but the middle class doesn't have. That's why the number of suicide, committed to suicide, is rising day by day. The number of people, the elite people, to leave country, rising is rising day by day. Who wants to make our country? Who wants to make our homeland? It was a traditional way for non-development uh, 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 non country to send the student to the developed country to study and return back, bring the experience for making homeland. But nobody now returned to my homeland because if they came back, they will be arrested, they will be executed, they will be, you know, fired from job. And this is human rights non-official talking, we can talk in your campus because it's not hierarchy, it's not hegemony, it's something like, okay, we are human rights defender. What we can do? We can focus on first, freedom of prisoner. St second, stop the death penalty in Iran. Third, freedom of expression, four, freedom of women, five, leaving the sanction, six, unveil the corruption, state corruption. This is, you, these are we, human rights defender, depart and, uh, yes, depart of our estate, we can do. However, maybe United Nations can't do it. But Thank we you. can. Thank you. Please, Patrick, you also. I was referring to what do you think is the main message that you would like to bring uh, to the uh, uh, participants in the Venice School for Human Rights in terms of uh, what are the personal qualities that you need to defend uh, yeah. your community and also what are the main tools uh, also for networking and for remaining uh, um, part of a community of human rights defenders that can support each other. Yeah, uh, for sure it's a really interesting opportunity tomorrow to have uh, this meeting with uh, 24 uh, students from all over the world. Like uh, This is very, very important, this diversity. Uh, I always say that one of the main things that I uh, really gained in my, um, in my study in, in Bologna that we were huge diversity. I learn about human rights from different point of views and that's very important and add point for every human rights defender and activist. So tomorrow we need to hear from everyone. Uh, it will not be about Patrick only but about everyone who's attending. We want to hear their experiences. Uh, for me, uh, I'm not in the position to give advice. Maybe I will share experiences and we can learn from this. Uh, tomorrow I will talk mainly about uh, imprisonment and the effect of imprisonment and uh, the, um, the detention because of your uh, opinion, because of expressing your opinion. I will focus only m more about the situation inside the Egyptian prisons. Um, the, um, the updates related to the situation of freedom of speech in Egypt, uh, not only Egypt, but also Italy, as I'm now also working over the Italian situation, uh, will work on, on both sides. Um, what I can say that they are really privileged. Uh, when I was young, I wish I can have uh, this chance to exchange experiences with people in, in my age from different uh, uh, countries all over the world. It's really important, this kind of exchanging experiences, because everyone can learn something from the experience of the other. Um, uh, it would be a really great opportunity to meet all of them. Uh, also, uh, I feel like uh, it's an add point. Uh, networking is very important. Uh, in my story, uh, networking was the magic that make me here today in front, of, like uh, between all of you. Networking was the thing that make my case viral all over the world in just like few days. Everyone knew about my story. It's not about anything. It was just about networking. Uh, uh, it's really important to collaborate over like a lot of cases like 
like the freedom of speech, about uh, women rights, about uh, uh, the like uh, this penalty. Uh, a lot of cases, if we work on them uh, in a collaborative way, it will be much, much uh, better and it will be more successful stores after working over them in a collaborative way. Uh, I think um, networking is a main thing uh, that we should always work on and to have this huge network and that um, the Global Campus of Human Rights working over making a really huge network of human rights activists who are really young and they build on this, that will be a really good purpose for them and for the program and uh, I'm really excited to meet them tomorrow. Thank you, we are all uh, excited for this and. Uh, Really thankful for your contributions. Uh, we would like to open uh, for um, any question uh, from uh, participants uh, um, in the public, uh, journalists, uh, please, uh, um, if you would like to pose any question to our uh, invitees and experts. Anything in particular? Okay. Um. Yes, I have one question. It's about, you were talking a lot about your experiences in prison and trauma, and also your experiences in movements, etc. before and during. Um, wondering how simple people in a community could help afterwards. Like, for example, when you go out of prison, when you survive and you want to continue, what we could do to support afterwards all these human rights defenders like you? If we are simple part of our community here in Venice or abroad, what could be a simple action or something more that we could do to help? to help all these women in prison, that really breaks my heart, or other people in the world that are suffering at the moment. Thank you. Uh, I think like uh, every, every word and every work and every article and every tweet, every post about the prisoners of consciousness, uh, it changed the situation. Um, I think uh, a lot of prisoners, one of them, their main concern is that they could be, could be forgotten. If you feel that you are not uh, existing anymore in the prison you are in your small cell if you don't feel that someone is asking about you and here I'm not talking about the family for sure about someone who's supporting you and believing in your cause and that you go to the prison because you are defending a real fundamental important ideas like human rights uh, I think hardest day for me in the prison when I was thinking about did the people forget about me uh, no one is thinking anymore about me and I was lucky because I always receive like messages and support from everyone but my colleagues there who are not lucky enough to be popular who are not well known they only uh, pay the taxes of choosing being by the side of human rights and they are there in the prison and no one think about them uh, I will have a very small story that one day uh, there is someone who I was always talking to inside the prison, and he's always depressed. One day I see him like very, very happy after one of the visits. So I ask him, oh, what happened? What changed your mind about being always depressed? He told me, one of my old friends in the school just sent me a letter, and he received this letter. And that's like a life-changing experience. Uh, he was super depressed, always angry, always uh, like uh, arguing that he will not resist anymore in the prison. But just that someone think about him, it changed his life. That's the importance of the support. That's the importance of always thinking about the prisoners of consciousness. Uh, I think that one of those letters could save uh, the life of, of someone who is in the prison. Uh, one of the posts could save the life of someone. Uh, I know that sometimes you say, oh, my post will change something, my post will uh, do anything, my letter will change. It. Yeah, it's changed, and I'm here today because of this work. Uh, about the trauma, it's... Uh, for me, and um, um, I'm feeling that it's the same for everyone, the, I go out of the prison, but the prison didn't go out of my body. Like, always there is a scar in the middle of my heart about this experience. I can't forget about it. Um, and uh, for the traumas, the only advice that I have that anyone who could go out of the prison, he should always ask for a psychological support. It's not a shame to ask about it. It's a very important thing, and it's part of human rights that you should ask for help because uh, 
you are a human being. Yeah, I know that everyone is figuring us who go out and survive from the prison as a heroes. Yeah, uh, maybe that, right? But we are a human being. We pass by the hard times and we should digest this really hard experience and uh, inhuman experience. Yes, you told everything. Thank you. It was the same feeling, uh, uh, you know, scared of being forgotten. It, 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 it's a very bad feeling, uh, even for, you know, uh, uh, how can I say? Anyway, I was a well-known human rights defender and women rights activist. So I, I, was, I was sure that I am still in the mind of my friends and my co-activists, fellow activists. But sometimes I had thought, no, everybody forget me, and everybody has their own life except me. And on that time, it was the very, very time you should stand on yourself. And for me, I can say fighting one of the most important step of my fighting start in the prison when I felt that I am alone. But okay, what can I do? Can I go with the interrogator and say yes to all of the uh, questions who ask me? Or, and on that time, very that time, I decided no mansure. Either everybody think of you or not, you are a fighter. Stand by yourself. And I was, I was feeling powerful, really powerful. And it's very nice point. And m some of the creator of the handmade, because most of them s send me the uh, small caption if we exhibit our exhibition somewhere, you can welcome, you are welcome to see. And most of the narration is that we are created this handmade because we didn't want to be forget. And this is very important. And you know, everybody when is in prison know that when they will be released, they will lose their job, they will lose a lot of things. For my case, even I lost my apartment because my apartment was the bail for my releasing. So, but when I, I <laughs> the, the, the last time and the first time, it was very important for me. The second time it was in another city and it was terrible. But when I released, I saw a lot of friends and family front of the prison with a lot of flowers and with a lot of uh, gift. I didn't know how they understood that. I thought with myself as a despair inside himself, but I think they heard me and please heard the prisoners whisper. It is my message as a former prisoner. Thank you both, uh, Patrick and Mansoure. I think we can uh, come to the conclusion of uh, this press conference. We are really thankful for uh, your uh, testifying your experiences and also with a lot of uh, uh, personal uh, touch and, uh, and uh, emotion. Uh, that you bring uh, to your cause and to and to your role as being voices of uh, many other uh, human rights defenders and uh, people that are suffering uh, human rights violations. I just want to and what uh, came from uh, also your uh, your example is uh, reinforcing for us as a global campus of human rights. Uh, our thinking that as uh, academic institutions, universities, educators, uh, students, uh, we are uh, all uh, called upon our uh, personal responsibilities to continue um, uh, this work. And we feel we have a social uh, responsibility, a social role uh, in continuing uh, this, um, this action. So um, everybody as uh, members of the civil society can uh, both uh, 
help uh, those like you uh, are um, uh, placing yourself and your lives in the in the in the causes for human rights protection and uh, and also um, uh, continue the education work which is at the basis uh, of all uh, our uh, action so thank you again for uh, being with us and thank you for to all uh, uh, the people that uh, followed uh, uh, us uh, also online. Mm -hmm.